Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and I have the second instalment of my Marvel Crisis Protocol painting tutorials for you today. The legend himself, the man in the metal armour who, by right, should only really fear a tin opener, Tony Stark himself, otherwise known as Iron Man. This is a slightly different model to that one I've painted before. There are only really two areas that need huge attention on this model, but they are the two areas that really bring this character to life, so absolutely no pressure there. In this guide, I'll show you step by step how to create a stunning looking centerpiece for your Avengers roster and using extreme edge highlights and non-metallic metals. When my model was prepped and assembled, I undercoated it with Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. Brush is ready guys, let's get painting! Base Colours There are only really two areas of majority interest in Iron Man, so this stage really isn't too taxing. All the gold areas on Iron Man, the faceplate, neck, side panels and joints between the main areas of arm plating were given a base coat using a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Iroko and Gobi Brown. This will give a nice rich base coat to work for subtle non-metallics off of for the rest of the layering and highlighting stages. The rest of the armour plating was given a solid, thorough base coat with a 1 to 1 mix of deep red and red leather. This will cover pretty well over the grey undercoat, but you may find you want to make a few separate passes to get a smooth, consistent finish over all the plate work. This will be important going forward with the rest of the model. Gold plating. All the gold plating now was given a recessed shade using pure Gobi Brown. Now I'm looking to focus this between the ridges of each plate and where the curve of the armour descends into the shadow of the rest of the model. This will help block out where my reflective surfaces are going to be going forward. The face plate in particular has very defined grooves and recesses around the cheekbones which will take this shade really well. I pushed the recess shading a little bit further by adding in African Shadow to the Gobi Brown and retracing over the areas I've just shaded. I'm working this closer to the source of the shadows here to create a bit more of a blended look to the shading and just increasing the intensity of the dark areas ever so slightly. You can push these recess shades as far as you want before moving on to the layer stages. With my shading in place, I started gradually building up the upper reflective surfaces of the gold by adding in small quantities of Sahara yellow into the base coat mix. As you can see here, I'm framing this around the shaded areas and trying to blend this in with the base coat to build up a gradual progression of light around the curve of the plating itself. This will get more refined as I progress through these stages, but at the moment I'm just trying to get my blocking in initially for the lighter areas of gold. I'm continuing to add small amounts of Sahara Yellow into the mix until my overall mixture is a rough one to one split between the base mix and Sahara Yellow. I'm keeping the additions of Sahara fairly minimum with each pass as this will help strengthen the blend and smooth out the transition from the darker areas to light. With the extra emphasis put on the shading earlier you can see the shine and start of the reflective surface starting to take shape here now. When I'm happy with how my initial layer stages are looking, it's time to raise the tone now. To achieve this, I started adding in small amounts of Lilith Yellow into the mix in the same way I used the Sahara Yellow. At this stage now, I'm looking to feather this in place and I'm starting to draw this towards all the edges, framing the higher points of every reflective surface, again with every pass taking care to smooth out and soften the blend as much as I can between the dark and light areas. While I'm building up this stage with Lilith Yellow, I'm adding in intermittent glazes with diluted Citadel Adrucci Violet, keeping these more targeted each time. 
and the reason for this is to try and help soften the blend as much as possible as I bring up the hue more and more with the very bright tone of the Lilith. Repeat the last two stages as much as you feel is necessary to build up the frame and reflections of the gold, each time gradually increasing the amount of Lilith yellow until you're happy with the look. For the penultimate highlight stage, I added in white sand to the overall mix and basically traced this around all the edges and most prominent parts of the gold, keeping my application as tight and controlled as I can, as I'm only looking to frame the upper, most reflective surfaces of the gold at this stage. Finally, when I'm happy with the overall look of all my gold, a dot highlight was applied using pure white just at the corners and very tips and edges of gold. This will just represent where the light is hitting most prominently and make that sheen pop just a little bit more. Red Armour The process for the red armour is very similar in terms of application to that of the gold to be honest, except this time I'm not as focused on creating shine and reflection comparatively. To start with, a shade was applied to the recesses between the plates and over the areas of plate work that are away from your source of light by adding Arbuckle's Brown into the base coat mix. This will help give a subtle richness to the shading of the armour which will complement the overall look of the model. As with the golds, I pushed these shades a little bit further as I wanted to heighten the contrast more by adding in Elgandor Purple into the mix and applying a second recess shade over all the red armour. The layers over the armour now were blocked out by adding blood red into the deep red and red leather base mix. I'm looking at a rough 1 to 3 ratio split over the base mix at this stage. There's a lot more flat surfaces with a lot more surface area compared to the golds. So as you can see here, I'm just getting the initial layer in place, leaving the recess shades showing as much as I can in the more pronounced curves and recesses. Continue building up these layers by adding more blood red into the mix, as we did with the Sahara yellow for the golds, until you're layering over all the reds using pure blood red. Now you don't have to add quite as many interim stages if you don't want to here, you actually want the red armour to look a little bit sharper and angular in contrast with the smoothness of the underlying golds. I'm jumping to a final layer stage with a very vibrant red now, using Antares Red to further frame the edges of all the built up areas. This will start giving Iron Man the characteristic hot rod red look to his armour that he's famous for. Now I'm applying this as a slightly thicker edge layer to start defining the very harsh edges of all the plate work in preparation for the highlight.
and Extreme Edge highlight was then applied all around the armor edges using TMI Orange. Yet another quite stark jump in tone, but one that really helps push the characteristic tones of the red that I'm trying to achieve. With the smooth layers in place underneath, the effect will look really authentic as long as you're precise with your application. The armor will look really sharp and really stand out. When you're happy with the look of the reds now, as with the golds, a dot highlight was applied with a one-to-one -one mix of TMI orange and white sands. I'm not using pure white here as I don't want to risk desaturating the tone of the reds right at the end. I want to give a slight warmth and richness to it even at this stage. Phew, that's basically him done now, right? extra details. The arc reactor in the chest and the inner circles of the hand pulses and armour rivets were very carefully picked out now using Adriatic Blue. This is a nice spot colour which will contrast well against the rich yellows and reds. A quick targeted layer was applied to the upper half of the circle areas with a one-to-one -one mix of Adriatic Blue and White. Finally, a dot highlight was applied in the upper area with pure white, just to give a glint of light hitting the glass, much like a lens would. The eye slits in the helmet were now very carefully picked out using black. The foot jet was then given a base coat using Adriatic Blue. The recesses of the jet were carefully shaded using the one-to-one -one mix of Adriatic Blue and Caspian Blue. This was then layered up gradually using a two-to-one mix of Adriatic Blue and White, leaving the shade showing in the recesses. Increasing the amount of white in the mix as you draw this towards the upper and most prominent areas of energy. The inner workings of the explosion were then picked out with a few thin coats of tin ear yellow. I then blended in diluted TMI orange over the explosion, working this out towards the edges of the blast. Finally, blending in diluted deep red again to the outer areas of the blast to try and get an authentic fire effect. The 
The base and the rest of the explosion were painted with petroleum grey and dry brushed up by adding in miscatonic grey and white depending on how bright you wish this to be. Please see my Star Wars Shatterpoint baking tutorial for the exact recipe and method for this. But here we are, Tony Stark, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist and above all else absolute hero in his characteristic Iron Man armour ready to stand with his fellow Avengers and superheroes on the battlefield to defend Earth from anything that might threaten it. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Please leave a like and subscribe for future content. Make sure you hit that bell to stay up to date. And as always, take care and happy hobbying.